On this week's show, Fight Club 3, Free Comic Book Day, and can Black Panther win an Oscar? We're going to find out, and you're going to tell us. It's Previews World Weekly, and it's happening right now. What's up, Previews World? It's Wednesday, it's 4 p.m., which means it's time for Previews World Weekly. I am one of your hosts, Troy Jeffrey Allen. And I'm Thea, and we're here every week to remind you to stop at a comic shop and get involved in the world of comics. And we got a buttload of trailers last week. So many. Like in the last couple of days, actually. Yeah. Uh, there was Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., mm -hmm. there was The Boys, mm -hmm. and for our purposes, there was Birds of Prey. Yes. Which I know is kind of your jam. Yes. What did you think? Did you get a look at it? I did. Well, it was more like a teaser. It's, it's not a trailer. It's a super, it's like it's super a teaser. Teaser, teaser. Very, very casual. <laughs> right. It's a teaser very of casual. a teaser. Yeah, a teaser of a teaser. Well, what were, your, what were your thoughts? Because I know uh, we've talked about Harley Quinn yeah. off camera, but... I'm tired of Harley Quinn. <laughs> I'm yeah. very, very tired there, of there, Harley Quinn. There was a lot of Harley Quinn. There was a summer of Harley that was there, pretty intense. Yeah. She, you know, made her resurgence, and now yeah. she's everywhere. Everywhere. And I want to see other characters. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I get that. And I mean, like, she was definitely the focus of the teaser. And, like, I had to look at the synopsis of the trailer to find mm -hmm. out that Huntress is in it. Yeah. Which I thought was interesting. Right. <laughs> yeah, you don't even know who else is in it. Right, And yeah. then, you know, I, don't, I just don't see her as part of that team. And yeah, yeah. She hasn't, as far as I know, classically been part of the team. No, I don't think so right? either. Right? Yeah. So we all know who should really be in this team. Oh, look at that. Right? We all know who should really be. Should be Thea, or Bad Girl specifically. <laughs> Can you wear that the rest of the show? Don't tempt you. <laughs> As I put it on and look totally wonky, but like, because <laughs> I made up. it to go on a wig. But yeah, yeah no, yeah. we know who should really should be, be Bad Girl. I mean, should like, yeah, it's you know, DC's in this interesting position. And Marvel, Marvel, Marvel's in the opposite in the opposite situation. But I think DC is an interesting an interesting position where these characters have spent so much time in other mediums, yeah, like television and film, et cetera, mm -hmm, et cetera, mm -hmm. that they can kind of play a little fast and loose with the adaptations. Yeah. So I I I don't get as up in arms about the DC characters. No, I don't mind that they mix things up a little. Right. But of all the characters to pick. Yeah. Yeah. I like I, yeah. I'm just I like I. I it sounds like she's not the villain in the in the in the movie. So. Well, she's not. Really a villain anymore. Team. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To her credit, right? Right, yeah. And to her writer's credit. Right. Which is good. Like, but I'm, that's fine. We'll see. We've got her in other stuff. Yeah. Can we see some new, some new ladies? Right. I know we're all about the girl power right now, too. So, like, by all means, but not Harley. Not Harley. Yeah. We've seen Harley before. I mean, I get it. I know there's probably people excited for it. Of course there you are. You know, but. And I don't blame them. It looks like a blind melon. We all like what video. we want. It looks like a blind <laughs> melon video. It looks like a blind melon video. <laughs> You're so right. I didn't think about that. It looks like some weird music video. But yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, good. More comic movies, gimme. But maybe not Harley next time, please. Yeah, <laughs> Did you see the Umbrella Academy one? I didn't. Oh, you didn't? No. no. It's it's interesting. Like I, in my mind, you know, you read these comics sometimes, mm -hmm. and like you kind of cast them in your head or like sure. you hear certain voices in your head Real or fan you know, cast you know right um i always saw it more as tim burton but they seem to Fair be doing enough. more of a wes anderson thing huh which i think is kind of interesting that is interesting and i'm not quite sure how i feel about it like yeah. i don't know if i I'm, I'm not gonna say i don't like it because like it seems like it's checking all the right boxes mm -hmm. um but, but yeah, yeah i would see my chemical romance as more of a yeah tim burton-esque i mean traditionally their music videos do sort of have that mm -hmm kind of spin on them. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's not like he directed them, but right. they definitely took some influence right, there. Right, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. so, we'll see. Yeah, like a lot of, lot of stuff, like The Boys I mentioned earlier is one of the, another one that dropped. Mm -hmm. I'm also a fan of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. I'm probably mm -hmm. like a very small minority that likes Agents like of S.H.I.E.L.D. Agents. Okay, good. Because I, it's a I'm good show. I'm not up to date on it, right, but right. I enjoy it. I'm definitely behind it too. But like every time I like put it down and I pick it back, I'm like, I actually like this show. Yeah, I like these no, characters. Yeah, me too. Me so, too. Um, definitely you can check out all those trailers online. You can check them out on PreviewsWorld.com. We put them all up this past week, so definitely check that out. And now we're going to show you what's at comic shops this week. Enemy is here, as usual, and she's going to give us a rundown of some of the featured titles available at comic shops now. What's up, Previews World? Mia here, and I'm going to give you a look at some of the new titles in store this week. Here's what's at comic shops.
at it? No way. Your comic shop has something for every type of customer. So stop at a comic shop today and I'll see you back here next week. Thanks Mia, another solid lineup of stuff coming out this week. And what are you looking at? Um, so actually, I, so people don't like really like gimmicks, I feel like in comics, or at least like that's what people always say. But uh, there's an Uncanny X-Men 3D comic that's a mm -hmm. reprint. And I, I, I just think it's really neat. Like it's, yeah. it's, I think it's, what is it? It's Uncanny 268. So it's like one of the books that came out in the late 80s, early 90s. It's Jim Lee, it's Chris Claremont. I mean, this is a classic team up and they've just redone the entire book in 3D. Huh. And I, yeah, I just think it's really neat. Yeah, like pop on your glasses and yeah, everything. Yeah, exactly. I like that. I like more that's than fun. more than three D movies. I like three D comics. I just think that's a yeah, fun yeah, thing yeah. to do. And uh, it just so happens. A novelty. No, it is. It really is a novelty. And you know, it's like eight bucks. But like, I'm like, eh, you know, Worth it's, it's it. a cool, it's a cool experience. Yeah. And you already know what the story is, so you like it. Right. <laughs> exactly. Um, so yeah. It probably won't give you a headache. It probably won't give you a headache. <laughs> exactly. Right. Like as opposed to IMAX 3D. Ooh. Right. And because you motion sickness. <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, like I know uh, DC did a few in the past. Uh, like they did. A, I remember there was like two Superman 3D books that I loved. Nice. Um, and so yeah, this is like not an original story, but. More of this, please. I like these. This is yeah. cool. So, yeah. It's just extra fun. Extra fun. What are you looking forward to? Uh-huh. Uh-oh. Okay. <laughs> Robots versus princesses. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I saw this title and I was like, this exists? This yep. is amazing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's a book from Dynamite. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it's these warring kingdoms of princesses and robots. And okay, nice. We have Princess Zara versus Tyrannus, nice. the robot, right? Nice, I mean, nice. This one, uh, we got uh, issue number four. They've got the big showdown okay. coming up. So. Okay. so yeah, I mean, I just had to talk about this book out of principle. Yeah, and the yeah. concept alone was like, Right. I know I I remember seeing the solicitor for issue one like about like oh yeah, I think it was like late summer or something mm -hmm. like that. And just like it definitely caught my eye, so something to look out for for and like I'm, It sounds like I, a lot of fun and the artwork looks really cool. It's like yeah. somebody needs to make this into a cartoon. Right? right, yeah, yeah, yeah. It seems like it's one of those concepts. Mm -hmm. Um also out this week, something I'm looking forward to that I kind of ignored at first and then like Double back around. So I'm subscribed to like Warren Ellis's newsletter, <laughs> and we've talked to we talked about Warren Ellis before. We talked about Castlevania, which yeah. he writes, um, and um, he kind of spotlighted this book. It's Peter Cannon Thunderbolt number one, and it made me pay attention to it because he pulled a caption or pulled a, a, a screen grab from the actual book itself. Mm -hmm. I put it on my Instagram, and it's Peter Cannon saying, "Hello, alien friend. Do you like bullet violence?" <laughs> <laughs> oh my! <laughs> and I like saw that, and I was like. <laughs> Wait, wait, whoa, whoa, what, what is this book? Let me go back on the website and look at this. So it turns out like um, Peter Cannon, actually he's a character from the 60s. Mm -hmm. um, he actually br had a very brief brush with DC Comics, um, being published by DC Comics at one point in time. But currently they're bringing him back, not DC, but another company's bringing him back, and they're trying to reestablish him into a new universe, kind of like, you know, but building off of the existing mythology of this character. Cool. It's Karen Gillan who does Wicked and Divine. Right. And one thing I love about Karen Gillan is you really don't quite, you're not able to pigeonhole him. And yeah. this is a perfect example of this. The other cool thing about this, which I did not know, and I was discovering all sorts of stuff, which is all the more reason to, to make me want to read this book. He's an inspiration for uh, Ozymandias from Watchmen. Oh, dang. So we all know that Alan How Moore. interesting. Right. We all know that Alan Moore pulled a bunch of like, you know, mm -hmm. already existing characters and tried to like, make Watchmen from those characters. Right. But then DC was like, no, you can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> so he started just recreating those characters, but just using those archetypes. Yeah. This is one of them. Huh. And Peter Cannon. So, yeah. That's really neat. Right? I just, like, I thought the that was really interesting. The more you know. Exactly. <laughs> the so there you go. Um, so yeah, Peter Cannon Thunderbolt. Really cool. Like, definitely check that, that out. Uh, what else are you looking forward to this That week? girl. <laughs> no one saw that coming. No one saw that coming. There you go. Uh -huh. So we got issue number 31 here, and uh, we've got a fun little storyline where Batgirl's going to be helping campaign for a reformer candidate who's like really ready to take on the GCPD, mm -hmm. which of course puts her in an awkward place with her dad, mm -hmm. yeah. Commissioner Gordon, right? And then of course we have the old flame comes back to in, into her life of and course. she's got to deal with that. So just like, hmm. It's going to be a long day. Right. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, I've heard um, some really interesting things about this series. I heard people say they really are enjoying the direction they're going. Yeah. I know some people are a little upset that they changed the costume, because I think it was like, this is the series that they did change the costume, or this mm -hmm. creative team. But They switch it up a lot with it. Right, her. right, because she was the Burnside version for a yep. while there. Batgirl Burnside. Um, but now they're kind of going to, I won't say outright classic, but definitely like more mm, of a classic A little more look. classic, yeah. yeah. yeah so. I ain't mad. Definitely check that out. Also out this week, uh, Heroes in Crisis, mm -hmm. a new 
issue is out. And uh, I've always said, don't trust AI. <laughs> Never. And it just so happens that Sanctuary, this uh, this facility that's been the, the focus of Heroes in Crisis since issue one, now this AI is running rampant and leaking all the superhero secrets to the internet. Oh no. So it's getting kind of insane. Um, also, I just want to point out Star Trek, the Q conflict is out this mm -hmm. week. That's another big one. If you're a big Star Trek fan, it features literally just about all the captains. Like maybe it was, the only ones it doesn't feature is the guy from Scott Bakula. <laughs> <laughs> Enterprise, Enterprise, there you go. <laughs> so, but yes, all the other captains, Janeway, Kirk, are involved, and it's a big, pretty much crossover that IDW's doing, so. Yeah. And uh, Very what else? Cool. We also have Fight Club 3 yeah. mm -hmm. is out this week. So, uh, of course, good old Chuck Palahniuk, yeah. right? Dark yeah. Horse Publishing. And the storyline here sounds really nuts, yeah. as, of course, it would be. It's a Fight Club, right? True. So, we've got uh, Marla Singer giving birth to her second child, but the father isn't her husband, it's Tyler Durden. Mm -hmm, yeah. And the husband, uh, the narrator basically, mm -hmm. now referred to as Balthazar, mm -hmm. um, has to form an alliance with Tyler because some right. crazy group of folks has come out with like this plan to fine tune humanity and uh, sort of like, okay. right? A new version of Project Mayhem. Yeah, yeah. Shape. And okay. of course in the, in the second Flight Club, Durden transforms Project Mayhem into Rise or Die. <laughs> I just, I love these titles of these yeah, like yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> revolutions. Uh -huh. Right, right. <laughs> so yeah. Okay. No, I like, I, the Fight Club sequel, it was something I was like, really? <laughs> but then I, you know, when you actually look into it and you start to read about it, you're like, this is actually a logical yeah, extension of this. Cool, and yeah. like the idea that Marla Singer had Tyler's kid, that's insane. Right. <laughs> How does that work? But it works. But it works, right? yeah. yeah. So definitely check that out. Tons of cool stuff in comic shops, of course, every week. And uh, now we're going to talk about the news. We're going to check out what everybody's been talking about in the last seven days in the world of comics. Here we go. <laughs> Last week, the world welcomed a new age of the Guardians of the Galaxy to the Marvel Universe, as the superstar creative team of Donny Cates, Jeff Shaw, and Marta Gracia, along with cover artists David Marquez and Dean White, kicked off a new adventure for everyone's favorite cosmic heroes. After debuting to critical acclaim from comic fans and critics alike, Marvel is proud to announce that Guardians of the Galaxy number one will return to comic shops for a second printing. Nice, nice, nice. Yeah, I, we, I, can we talk about this? series or this particular <laughs> run of books anymore. Right. Uh, it's, no, it's really cool. The only thing, I, I still haven't read number one yet because it just came out last week mm -hmm. and I have a bunch of stuff in front of it. I really hope the cover isn't giving away who the team is. Right. <laughs> I mean, if so, that's an awesome team, but that was kind of part of the fun of figuring out. But yeah, we'll see. learning but, who the new folks are. But yeah, and also <laughs> always have to point this out, just because it's going back to second printing doesn't mean that it's not at your comic shop exactly, right now. It just yeah. means that on the distributor level, it's sold out. So, so yeah, by all yeah. means, if you want to try and get a hold of the original printing, go for it. Head out to your comic shop to yeah. see if they've got it or give them a call, you know? <laughs> Communication is important. It is. <laughs> Next up, DC will showcase its upcoming young reader imprints, DC Inc., which is young adult, and DC Zoom, which is middle grade, at this year's free comic book day around the globe. DC's free comic book offerings will include early looks at Under the Moon, a Catwoman tale from DC Inc., and Dear Justice League from DC Zoom. Under the Moon, a Catwoman tale special edition serves as DC's gold title and features a free chapter from the young adult original graphic novel. The full graphic novel is slated to hit stores May 7th. The special edition also includes a sneak preview of DC Inc.'s upcoming Teen Titans Raven graphic novel, which of course we know I'm very excited mm -hmm. about. I also just really like young adult stuff, so yeah, yeah, yeah. right up my alley. Mm -hmm. And then DC's Free Comic Book Day Silver comic book will be a kid's title featuring two exclusive free chapters from Dear Justice League, an original graphic novel for middle graders. And that full novel is slated to hit stores August 6th. The early Free Comic Book Day special edition will feature two excerpts starring Superman and Hawkgirl. And don't forget that Free Comic Book Day this year is Saturday, May 4th. Yeah. So if you want to check out either of those new titles or those new, you know, mm -hmm. lines of books, Free Comic Book Day is the place to do it. The place to do it, yeah. And of course, we'll keep you guys updated on all the other announcements for Free Comic Book Day because Free Comic Book Day is important. So. It is. It's yeah. important. It's awesome. Yeah. And free things. Yeah. Hard to beat. Yeah. <laughs> Next up, a new XO Man of War series is coming from Valiant, though the publisher is seemingly really hush-hush on the details. Mm -hmm. 
they released a really sweet teaser image along with the statement that XO Manowar will be unleashed in a brand new ongoing series this fall. Keep your eyes on the stars for more info soon. Nice, nice. The first 14 issues of XO Manowar is collected on a deluxe hardcover, now available to pre-order if you want to get caught up on what he's been up to. And yeah, I mean, that's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. All right. I mean, yeah, the teaser's very hush hush. I mm -hmm. think uh, there's a lot of events kind of like circulating some of the Valiant books right now that yeah. I think, like, you know, is part of the reason why they're not telling you too much. Mm -hmm. But it's I Doug. I like that. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah, I mean, like, you know, hold, hold it back a little bit. But um, Doug Braithwaite, is, uh, that's his cover art. And, like, mm -hmm. I've always been a fan of his. So, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm big into that. Definitely so. a solid piece of artwork. Mm -hmm. What else we got? Are you troubled by strange noises in the night? <laughs> Do you experience feelings of dread in your basement or attic? Have you or your family actually seen a spook, specter, or ghost? If the answer is yes, then four fearless Ghostbuster teams are here to serve your supernatural elimina elimination needs, courtesy of IDW. <laughs> in celebration of the 35th anniversary of Ghostbusters, IDW Publishing will release a different Ghostbusters comic weekly in April, each focusing on a different team including the original Prime team from the classic film, the real Ghostbusters from the 1980s animated series, the all-female team that answered the call in 2016, and the next generation of extreme Ghostbusters. So keep an eye out at your local comic shop for all these awesome one-shots coming out. Yeah, I mean, we, we mentioned last week uh, that IDW really does have like a vast catalog yeah. of Ghostbusters material. Exactly. So no reason to fight over who's better. No. You know, like, IDW has all of them. <laughs> and also it's cool, like, I realized that Devin Grayson's doing one of those books. And mm -hmm. I don't know, a lot of people may not be familiar with Devin Grayson because she was kind of in comics and then she kind of left for a while, a while, but she's a really good writer. Yeah. So definitely check that out. I'm excited. But, I love all the Ghostbusters yeah. stuff. I'm so happy that we're coming out with a whole bunch of new stuff. Yeah, yeah, new material. Like, go Ghostbusters for three weeks in a row? Yeah, that's crazy. What? Actually, it has been three weeks in a row. Mm -hmm. Wow. This, you think <laughs> it was their anniversary or something. Look at that. Crazy talk. <laughs> <laughs> And last but not least, the February edition of Diamond Comic Distributors' monthly previews catalog arrives in comic shops and digitally. Today. Yeah. Today, guys. So this features comic books, graphic novels, toys, and other pop culture merchandise scheduled to go on sale beginning in April. And we've got this really cool Star Trek front cover from Greg Hildebrandt, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Oh, it is, it is Greg Hildebrandt. Yep. Look at that, yeah. Even says on the bottom. Yeah, didn't even realize that yep. until. That's no wonder I like it. <laughs> <laughs> no wonder you like it. And uh -huh. it features uh, War of the Realms on the back cover. Yeah, which is great. That guy which right. I think is Nick Bradshaw, I believe. Maybe. I don't know. I think that might be Nick Bradshaw. I could be wrong, but it's Either a great way, cover regardless. It's beautiful. It's, it is. It's like it's a beautiful really cool, character. super action packed. Yeah, a beautiful cover of chaos. So, yes, yeah. a beautiful cover of chaos <laughs> for sure. Mm -hmm. And of course, February is Black History Month. Yes. So this issue of previews will be showcasing comics and graphic novels that feature black characters, are created by African American creators, or describe the black experience in America. Mm -hmm. So keep an eye out for the Black History Month icon throughout the catalog for those items. Okay. And yeah, so this goes on sale at your lo local comic shop today, and you can pick it up for $3.99, or digitally you can pick it up at previewersworld.com slash digital. Yeah, yeah. Now, as, uh, I'm already kind of looking at, we're, of course, throughout the month we do our catalog videos, so mm -hmm. you'll see Thea and I, like, you know, individually in separate videos just talking about different stuff, stuff in the catalog. Mm -hmm. You know, she does Press Start, which is all the comic stuff, and I just do the catalog overview. Gaming. I'm sorry, gaming stuff, sorry. Don't even know. I'm sorry, comics. <laughs> I get comics on the brain. What do you want from me? <laughs> um, you know, we have sci-fi, and we have, uh, we're going to start doing horror soon, mm -hmm. and uh, Natasha does Indie Edge, so definitely keep an eye out for that. Yeah. I, but as I was going through the catalog, I saw this really cool Tron, and I'll actually have, try to have Johnny pull it up on the screen. Mm -hmm. It's a really cool Tron Batman from Dark Knight's Metal. Huh. <laughs> Interesting. Uh, and it's not, you know, Disney has a Tron license, so it's not right. actually Tron, right. but it looks but it very Tron-like. Tron. It's called The Murder Machine. The Murder Machine. Thank there you, Johnny. You and it looks awesome, so I'm probably going to buy that. It was actually pretty, it was decently priced, too, so cool. I'm all for it. Um, speaking of stuff at your local comic shop and coming to your local comic shop, it just so happens that a ton of toys have dropped this week, as they do every week. Natasha's here, and she's going to show us what's inside the previous toy chest. Check it out. Hey Previews World, Natasha here to give you a look inside the previous toy chest. Let's find out what's at comic shops this week.
that's not all. Before heading to your local comic shop, be sure to check out previewsworld.com slash new releases. There you'll find a complete rundown of everything a toy collector could possibly want. So a nice spread of toys coming out this week to your local comic shop, just like every single week. Uh, be sure to check out previewsworld.com slash new releases. Check that weekly to find out what action figures and statues, etc., are hitting your local comic store. But I saw the <laughs> the Thor and, and Rabbit. Rabbit. <laughs> <laughs> Thor and Rabbit. Right. All we need is Thor and Tree. Yep, yes. <laughs> so that's great. It's from DST. Yeah, was there yeah. anything you're eyeballing the at all? The Sonic or? Minimates. Okay, yeah, yeah. Because Sonic. Right, Gotta yeah. go fast. Gotta go fast. I love it. Um, but of course, every single week. Now, this is like what we're going to give away this week is not out this week. Yeah. Um, it's a Shazam two pack from mm -hmm. DC Collectibles, mm -hmm. but we're giving it away a little bit early. And Thea is going to tell you do, 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 how you can win Captain Marvel and Black Adam. Look at that. You guys want to win some Shazam? <laughs> Comment below on Facebook or YouTube, wherever you're watching us. We're going to get into some deep nerd territory here. Oh, yeah. Can Shazam beat Superman? <laughs> Let us know what you think, and we'll take entries up until next week's show on Wednesday, mm -hmm. and one of you guys could win these. Right. And, of course, we have last week's winner yes. of our small collection of pop, fi pop vinyls, right? Mm -hmm. And our winner is Oz Ackman, who suggested Slipknot Pops. <laughs> Which is like... I like, feel like Fine. the day they make Slipknot Pops is the day that every Slipknot fan revolts. <laughs> revolts. <laughs> or goes out and buys them. Or, I, mean, <laughs> I, I mean, they are a merchandising machine, yeah, so that's I mean, true. maybe. I don't know. Like, let us know. Like, do, are you Slipknot fans? Do you think they should make pops? I'm so? not, you know, honestly, I'm not a Slipknot fan, but uh -huh. I think they would kind of make cool pops. I mean, they would be interesting because for sure. they do have their whole thing going right, on, right? right? right they right, have yeah. individual looks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're definitely pretty cool. Yeah, right. They have a look, and like mm -hmm. I mean, like it would lend itself to a pop series. Exactly. So I just want to point out. So I was actually at a brunch because that's what we do in Washington D.C. <laughs> uh, this weekend, and out of nowhere, it was like someone mentioned they were like, like Shazam couldn't beat Superman, which I thought was really, <laughs> which is something, which is because so it's me, the <laughs> right? Well, actually, I, we came with this question before I even brought that up. Oh, and that's funny. Someone brought up Kingdom Come where they fought each other because, mm -hmm. like, and I think the argument was that someone needs to take Superman down a peg. So. Do you think Superman should be taken down a peg? Mm. Let us know in the comments. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> so, uh, taking it back to the catalog. Well, actually, this is technically, I think, last month's catalog. Mm -hmm. um, there's a book coming out called Assassin Nation. Uh, number one is featured, and you still have time to pre-order at your local comic shop, but we want to go ahead and give you guys a, a, a look at it. It's from Skybound. It's Erica Henderson and Kyle Starks. Check it out. Here's a trailer for Assassin Nation, number one. So that was Assassination from Image Comics and Skybound. Um, it's kind of interesting because it's Erica Henderson who's been known primarily for Squirrel Girl. Yeah. But she's kind of switching up her style a little bit and doing something a little bit more aggressive. And I like it. I think it's cool. <laughs> um, it's also written by Kyle Starks who's uh, behind Rick and Morty. So expect a action-packed comedy. For sure. Um, and like I said, it's available to pre-order at your local comic shop now. It's not in this month's catalog, but it was in previous month's catalog, but you can still pre-order it, so go for it. Oh, yes. And now... Man, I got a lot of a lot of feelings about this. So this is going to be interesting. Um, last week, Black Panther got an Oscar nod. Got several Oscar nods. One of them for Best Picture. And so we went online and asked you how you how did you feel about that. So we're going to jump into the murky waters of the social swamp with you, and you're going to let us know, and then we're going to talk about it. Check it out. So 
So we wanted to know your opinions on this pretty sweet, in my opinion, mm -hmm. Black Panther Oscar nomination. Mm -hmm. So uh, they were nominated for Best Picture, yeah. right? That mm -hmm. was the big thing. Uh, Andy Schwartz has said, Roma will probably win for Best Picture. Should Black Panther have been nominated? Sure, why not? It's better than lots of the extremely average movies that regularly get nominated for Best Picture. That's very fair. Lady Bird was nominated <laughs> last year, enough said. Ouch, I haven't seen Lady Bird, wow. so I don't. <laughs> yeah, no, I have no idea, but still. <laughs> Lady Bird's not something I watched either, but. Yeah, okay. Andy's got opinions. He's got opinions, barely <laughs> didn't like it. Fabricio Villas Boas said Ooh. that Infinity War was so much better. I mean, it was. Yeah. I mean, I, yeah. it's a matter of opinion, but yeah. I, it was it's a matter of opinion. Yeah. I, I, I like them both equally. Yeah. Okay. I was surprised at how much I liked Black Panther, mm -hmm. and Infinity War. I feel like people freaked out about a lot mm -hmm. because it's Infinity War. Right. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. My characters, but uh, I just felt that Black Panther really set up the story so yeah, well. Yeah. Yeah. Not impressive. Like, yeah. Yeah. So. No. Not to knock Black Panther no, at all. Yeah. 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 But. I uh, know. I think actually I do like Black Panther a little better than oh, Infinity okay. War. All right. For me, it's like uh, it's like chocolate in your peanut butter Infinity War. Yeah. Like you just kind of get everything. So it's like oh, I'm with it. You right. You right. <laughs> Jason Brodnick said it's a great time to be a comic fan. Win or lose, it's a victory for the comic book community. Go for the gold, T'Challa. <laughs> <laughs> and that's so true. We have mm -hmm. so many good movies coming out that are based on comics. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. Right? There's a lot of them. It's yeah, yeah. been a blockbuster like. Decade. It, it really has. Like, I mean, it's been a decade of superhero movies. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's probably how this la these last ten years are going to be remembered. Eleven years now. Yeah. So for I have sure. some thoughts about that, but I don't want to jump in, jump ahead just yet. Do we have any more? Or? That was it. That was it. Yeah. Uh, well, first of all, let's get into your opinions about the Black Panther thing. Like, I mean, I've also been really out of the loop on other movies, mm -hmm. so I'm not entirely sure what I would put in the category to begin with. Right. Yeah. yeah. But for me, Black Panther, I think of the comic book movies recently, mm -hmm. is the one that stands out the most for mm -hmm. me, mm -hmm. for sure. I mean, it's it was definitely it took it took the world by storm. Yes. It is a cultural touchstone. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, clearly it is. Um, it's probably something to the equivalent of probably Titanic, actually, I'd say. And yeah. like in terms of just like right. how it just captured everybody's imagination and just like would not go away. <laughs> like, you know, yeah. like it was just like it just had momentum. And I feel like everything about it was just so good. Yeah, yeah, the right. Visuals mm -hmm. were amazing. The costumes right. were so good. Yeah, yeah, like yeah, yeah. I cannot even describe how much I love every costume in that movie. Oh, yeah, yeah, for sure. And I mean, I'm a costumer. You know, right, that's yeah, what yeah. I do. So yeah. like. Yeah, <laughs> it's just amazing. I mean, if anything, like I feel like I'm, I'm not. I'll be, I, I'll be surprised if it wins Best Picture. Yeah. But I will be upset if it didn't win Costume mm -hmm. Design. Right. Like I just think that that's, oh my God. that would be, that would be. That's the one it really, really insulting. deserves. Insulting. It would be really insulting. <laughs> oh my God, the costumes. Right. I didn't think. I think it's, it's in a lot of technical categories. It's actually pretty superior. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. like I, but yeah, I. I, you know, so I saw a lot of conversations online that were about how this validates the superhero genre and also comic books. Yes. And I, I don't want to be the Debbie Downer, right? But I kind of feel like that's a very nerd thing to kind of seek validation from these outside sources, like, you know. Fair enough. And but I, it's, I don't know mm -hmm. that it's necessarily validation seeking. Yeah. But that it's nice to have it. Yeah. You know, yeah. I don't think that people have been worried about that. We mm -hmm. have so much available to us mm -hmm. now that mm -hmm. I don't think that, it, that validation is something that nerds really seek mm -hmm. as a whole anymore. Yeah, yeah. Because it's it's part it's of everywhere. pop culture yeah, it's now. Prevalent, it's really yeah. normal. Mm -hmm. So I I think that it's just sort of nice to have that feather in your hat, you mm -hmm. know. Yeah, I don't yeah. I mean, maybe I'm just like do or die comics all the time, you know. <laughs> like I it's it's a pattern I've noticed, I'll just say that. Like, mm -hmm. I feel like it's something that, like, uh, and it's one of those things I think is interesting because if you've paid attention at all to any of the Hollywood news in the last 10 years, 11 years, or whatever, since Iron Man 2008, yep. Marvel has always been kind of pegged, Marvel Studios specifically, has always been kind of pegged as, like, what's wrong with Hollywood? And that's coming from the Hollywood press. Oh. Like, you know, like, that's what they've always been pegged by. And I find it very interesting that while Hollywood was trying to chase the diversity angle, you know, and failing miserably. Right. Marvel did it in a very natural way. They took a character that had been around for 30 plus years. Mm -hmm. They told his story the way that it should have been told, and they succeeded at it. And now, the Academy Awards, which is like the most Hollywood thing out there, is like, you right. oh, you guys are really great. But that's also how they function. Well, right? that's that's actually my other point too, yeah. which is that like, at the end of the day, this is a political move. Yes. 
and Hollywood, for sure. the Academy Awards have always been political. Like, I mean, and I'm not yeah, talking not about, not. like, left or right. I'm just talking about what looks good in the business. Yes. You know? Oh, absolutely. What makes them look good is the thing they're going to support. Right. Absolutely. And so, like, yeah, and I, I, so there's a part of me that kind of feels a little ick about this. I get this. that. A little I bit. I get that. I, you know? Because of that, for sure. Yeah, because yeah. of the whole Hollywood, like, well, we got to jump on this bandwagon because it's the good one. Right. right? Yeah, yeah. So. Right, right. So, and I mean, I'll put it like this. At the end of the day, I kind of feel personally that the worst thing that can happen to a movie is for it to win a Best Picture Oscar. <laughs> and I say that because historically, the movies that people always remember are the ones that lose. And like, you can always throw in like, okay, yes, The Wizard of Oz won, The Godfather won, yes, mm -hmm. of course. Star Wars, nope. <laughs> E.T., no. Yeah. And even when we get into Return of the King, and like, you know, like, of course, people like the Return of the King. Mm -hmm. But if you ask people which one is their favorite, they're going to say Fellowship or Two Towers. You know? know? Um, so the movies that people love, mm -hmm. Ghostbusters, Die Hard, like, you know, any number of these movies are not the ones that win the award. So, meh. I mean, good, it's cool, it looks nice, I yeah, guess. Yeah, no, I mean, I personally don't really care either mm -hmm. way. Awards are whatever, yeah, they're right, for right. other people. Mm -hmm. But it's cool that it's out there. It's cool that it's out there, it is. Personally, I just hope that Spike Lee gets his Oscar finally because mm -hmm. that's long overdue mm -hmm. and they snubbed him on Malcolm X, so yeah. I think that's a good deal. High so. time. That's, High my, time. that's all I'm going to say about that. Very true. <laughs> <laughs> um, so... Uh, Outside of that, that's it for us this week. Yes, um, but of course, we have our comic shop shout out. Absolutely. Bring it back to comics and take it out of Hollywood. Always. So what do we have this week? This week, we are featuring future pastimes in Sarnia, Ontario. Nice. And that was sent in by Boy 677 mm -hmm. So there you go, guys. We're going to leave you guys with a bunch of photos from the, the location at the end of the show. Mm -hmm. And of course, use the hashtag support your LCS on social media, wherever you can find us. Let us know what your favorite local comic shop is, and we can shout you out on the next episode of the yeah, show. Yeah, yeah. And uh, that's it. Uh, like she said, support your LCS. And on that note, I am Troy Jeffrey Allen. And I'm Thea, and we'll see you at the Spinner Rack. Watching Previews World Weekly. If you like the show, make sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any future episodes.